Peter Curry, welcome and congratulations on your work. How did you come across this protein? Oh, thanks, Joe. This is a culmination of six years of work and a very dedicated, hard-working PhD student in the group. But it started with a little discovery uh, in the freshwater fish called zebrafish, and we use this in biomedical research chiefly to look inside the transparent larvae and try to work out how stem cells work. So what we did was we made home movies of the repair process in these little transparent larvae, and we determined that a specific stem cell population needed another cell type called a macrophage. And we defined what that particular cell type secreted and induced the stem cell. So trying to understand uh, how stem cells are activated in the living tissue is one of the holy grails of stem cell research. And so this humble little zebrafish is able to help us unlock one of the secrets in muscle stem cell bile. And so then how do you make the, the jump from fish to humans? Yes, the fish tank to bedside approach. Uh, well, we, we discovered that when we took this protein and put it in a mouse, muscle, mu mouse model of muscle injury, which normally doesn't regenerate its muscle because the trauma is too large, this protein that we isolated from the zebrafish had a very specific and important role in stimulating mouse stem cells. And then when we used the human version of that protein in, in the muscle of the mouse, it was able to regenerate an injury that normally does not regenerate at all. So we're very excited about that observation. Wow, so thanks so much to the zebrafish, huh? Yeah, thanks to the zebrafish. <laughs> so uh, how would you administer this protein to a patient? So in the initial study in the mouse, we used it in a substance called a hydrogel, which is just like a, a viscous substance that allows us to directly apply it to the wound. And we've actually found a little version of the protein that we can inject directly into the bloodstream. So we think either approach would be applicable to either wounds or in the case of muscular dystrophy sufferers, being administered systemically into the bloodstream. Yeah. And at what rate could it rebuild or grow a muscle? Well, this is the best regenerating system or molecule we've been able to identify so far for muscle. And again, we think it could accelerate even normal traumas, such as the pulled hamstring or anything like that that uh, you receive uh, through athletic trauma, but right up to muscular dystrophy sufferers. Uh, and for people with what type of diseases and what type of injuries do you think this could be ter terrific for? You've already mentioned muscular dystrophy. Yes, and also, of course, the elderly suffer from... Uh, irreversible muscle wasting called sarcopenia and sadly if we all reach a certain age we're all going to get frail and we're all going to have muscle loss so we think another potential application is to increase the health span in the elderly and protect them from falls and frailty. Wow. And explain for because I'm sure there are many people watching now who might, might be getting older who think yeah they, they might need this so how how if they get to the stage where they do need this how would it work? Well, we're talking right now with drug companies about developing this for human uh, trials. So, of course, a discovery in an animal model needs years of work to try and get it to the clinic. But we're very excited about this because we've actually used the human protein in these particular studies. And so we think this will accelerate its translation into the healthcare system. Yeah. And could this have huge commercial application as well for people wanting to just to look as muscular as possible? Of course, that's not the area of science or in unmet clinical need that I'm interested in servicing. But um, who knows where this will go with this molecule. And uh, obviously, if you can build muscle mass, that has implications in a number of different areas. Yeah. And are you, as a, as a researcher and a scientist who's overseen the early work on this, are you, are you concerned at the possibilities for, for misuse of this down the track for people who might be going for that aesthetic look and might go overboard with it? Uh, well, as I said, how, how this develops into a therapy and how it's applied in, to the human condition is yet to be um, uh, worked over. But of course, any therapeutic or any molecule that has positive effects in regenerative capacities can be misused for different mm. aspects of biology. So yes, of course, um, if this is a really as potent in delivering muscle mass as we have our trials have suggested, it, it is of some concern, yes. Yeah. And so is this still a long way off for, from being 100% proven and available to the public or, or are you pretty confident with the, the extent to which it's been proven now? Any clinical trial can fail at any point in time, uh, and many of them do. So it would be a bold scientist to back up your latter statement. 
In terms of the time to the clinic, because the molecule is known to us and uh, it is the human protein, we think we can get at least to the point of knowing the answer to your question very rapidly. Wow, you, you, you seem pretty calm at the moment, but you must be so excited about it. It just seems like such a leap forward. I'm super excited for you know the PhD student, Danny, who did the work. It's, you know, this is basically one person's PhD thesis with wow. a lot of And it just shows you what an incredible talent we have in, locked in Australia and uh, how important it is that we unlock that for the benefit of the country and the health of all Australians. So one observation of one very clever and intelligent PhD student has led to one of the biggest discoveries in my career. Good on you, Danny. Okay, uh, Peter Curry, thanks so much for talking to us this morning from Melbourne and good luck with your continuing work. Thank you, Joe.